Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Smythe. The video you are about to watch will help in understanding a common and treatable eye condition called glaucoma. Your eye doctor may have noted some findings during your eye exam that suggest you are a candidate for glaucoma. It is very helpful to have this condition detected early in its course. In some cases, prompt treatment is appropriate. In other cases, the situation can simply be monitored for now. The goal for your eye care providers is to help you keep seeing for the years to come. I hope you find this short video to be informative, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Glaucoma is a disease that damages the optic nerve, the part of our eye that carries the images we see to our brain. There are many different kinds of glaucoma and many ways to treat it. Fortunately, early detection and treatment can help preserve vision so you can see all that life has to offer. To understand how glaucoma affects your eyes, it is important to understand how your eye sees. Light rays enter the eye through the clear cornea, then through the pupil and the lens. These light rays are focused onto the retina, a light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye. The optic nerve is connected to the retina and is made up of many nerve fibers. Signals from the retina are sent through the optic nerve to the brain, where they are interpreted as the images we see. In the healthy eye, a clear liquid called aqueous humor circulates inside the front portion of the eye. To maintain a constant healthy eye pressure, your eye continually produces a small amount of aqueous humor and an equal amount of this fluid flows out of the eye through a microscopic drain called the trabecular meshwork in the drainage angle. If you have glaucoma, the aqueous humor does not flow through the drainage angle properly. Fluid pressure in the eye increases and this extra force presses on the optic nerve in the back of the eye, causing damage to the nerve fibers. The most common form of glaucoma is called primary open angle glaucoma. This condition occurs when the drainage angle gradually becomes less efficient at draining fluid and the otherwise normal pressure of the eye becomes elevated. Your ophthalmologist will help you determine a target pressure for your eyes. It's important to note that your eye pressure is not directly related to your blood pressure or affected by stress. A less common form of glaucoma, called closed angle glaucoma, occurs when the drainage angle of the eye becomes blocked. The iris, the colored part of the eye, may close off the drainage angle. People of Asian descent and those who are farsighted tend to be more at risk for developing this form of glaucoma. With both open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma, the important thing to do is to lower the pressure within the eye. The first step in treating glaucoma is detecting it. One of the problems with glaucoma, especially open angle glaucoma, is that there are typically no symptoms when it develops, so people who have the disease may not know it. This is why it's so important to have regular eye exams as you get older. I discovered I had glaucoma uh, because I went to my eye doctor for a routine exam and he noticed that my pressure was high and suggested that I go to a glaucoma specialist. Um, I was 21 years old when I was diagnosed and it came about essentially through routine examinations that had resulted from a previous eye disease that I had and uh, I was followed closely by eye doctors. I started having problems with my vision and the optometrist really couldn't figure out what the problem was, but the optometrist referred me to an ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist found out that I had glaucoma. Glaucoma is more common as we grow older. People with elevated eye pressure are at increased risk. Glaucoma also can run in families. People of African and Hispanic ancestry are at increased risk for developing open ankle glaucoma and are more likely to go blind from it. Those who have suffered an eye injury in the past are also at increased risk, as are diabetics and people who are nearsighted. When we're doing a glaucoma evaluation, we measure the pressure in your eye and the corneal thickness. Inspect your drainage angle with a mirrored lens. 
visually inspect your optic nerve to see if there's any damage, and test your side or peripheral vision. We may also use computerized imaging techniques that measure the optic nerve to help detect early damage from glaucoma. A normal optic nerve is made up of more than one million tiny nerve fibers. With glaucoma, as the optic nerve is damaged, it loses nerve fibers. As a result, the appearance of the optic nerve changes. We refer to this as cupping. As the cupping increases, blind spots begin to develop in your field of vision. Ophthalmologists use a technique called a visual field test to look for these blind spots. The results of this test show us if and where blind spots are appearing in your field of vision, spots that you may not even notice. In the early stages of glaucoma, the visual field remains normal. As the optic nerve experiences further damage, blind spots begin to appear. These blind spots typically go undetected in your day-to-day -day activities until the optic nerve is significantly damaged and the blind spots become large. If all the optic nerve fibers die, blindness results. While there is no cure for glaucoma and optic nerve damage cannot be reversed, we can usually prevent vision loss if glaucoma is diagnosed and treated, especially if it is detected in its early stages. Also, some people who have elevated eye pressure but don't yet have glaucoma may benefit from treatment with eye drops. That's why it is so important to visit your ophthalmologist regularly if you are at risk for developing glaucoma. Once glaucoma is diagnosed, treating it is a team effort between you and your doctor. The most common way to treat glaucoma is with eye drops. In the vast majority of patients, these drops will prevent vision loss from glaucoma. These medications lower your eye pressure in one of two ways, either by slowing the production of aqueous humor or by improving the flow through the drainage angle. If your doctor prescribes eye drops for you, it's important to continue taking them as your doctor tells you to. After you put the drops into your eyes, it's important to keep your eyes closed for at least two to three minutes to minimize any unwanted side effects from the medication. I've been taking uh, eye drops for about five years. I take one drop in each eye in the morning. I've had no side effects from them whatsoever. And I put them into my daily routine so that um, when I take my vitamins in the morning, I also do my eye drops. As with all drugs, glaucoma medications may have a few side effects. For example, you may experience red eyes or changes in your eye color, or side effects may occur in other areas of your body, such as changes in your heart rate or breathing. Your doctor will select the medication best suited for you. It's important for your ophthalmologist to know about your other medical conditions and any medications you are taking. You should bring a list of your medications with you to your eye appointment. Also, be sure to tell your primary care doctor that you're taking glaucoma medication. In some cases, laser surgery is used to modify the drainage angle to improve the flow of fluid and lower eye pressure. This type of surgery is called laser trabeculoplasty. For people with closed angle glaucoma, a procedure called laser iridotomy is recommended. The laser creates a hole in the iris to improve the flow of aqueous fluid to the drainage angle. When medication or laser surgery has not adequately controlled the eye pressure, Glaucoma surgery in the operating room is recommended. This procedure is called a trabeculectomy. An ophthalmologist will create a new drainage channel for the aqueous humor to leave the eye. The fluid flows into a new filtering area called a bleb. The bleb is mostly hidden beneath the upper eyelid. Creating a new drainage channel in the eye improves the flow of aqueous humor, lowering eye pressure. Glaucoma surgery is typically an outpatient procedure. The surgery itself is actually pretty painless and easy for me as a patient, um, but in the, in the ensuing six weeks, it involved um, a lot of restrictions, no bending, no heavy lifting of more than 10 pounds, and just careful monitoring of the eye. Though serious complications are not common, there is always some risk associated with any surgical procedure, such as bleeding or infection. Some additional medication or surgery may be needed later. Each patient's surgery outcome depends on their healing process, and that healing process varies not only with each person, but with each surgery.
Vision loss from glaucoma usually can be prevented if it's detected and treated early enough. Fortunately, there are a number of ways to treat glaucoma. While some people may experience side effects from medications or surgery, the risks of side effects should always be balanced with the greater risk of leaving glaucoma untreated and losing vision. Now I see my ophthalmologist every three months. It's been 10 years and my vision is good. I play racquetball, I read, I play golf. Uh, it's wonderful. With early detection and treatment, glaucoma won't prevent you from enjoying the world around you.